Uh, in the World Lung Cancer Congress in Vienna this year, uh, there is an important study by name XN4 was presented. And the, in XN4 is the first randomized comparative study of a second generation TKI, namely serotinib, in comparison with standard chemotherapy. Now, the study design is actually very much similar to POL5-1014, trying to establish the role of serotinib as a first-line agent. The median progression-free survival of serotinib is actually 16.6 .6 months versus the chemotherapy of about 8.1 months. So it's almost double the median, and also the hazard ratio is highly significant. So the question is you know, whether uh, this should be a standard or not. Now, in my opinion, it can be one of the standards because they've been shown to be superior to chemotherapy, and therefore it can be one of the options. However, it's not a direct comparison with chrysotinib, so therefore we cannot say whether one is better than the other. Although numerically, with the chrysotinib, it was 10 months on the median compared to 16 months uh, in the serotinib, but we cannot really compare through different trials. So we can only know the information that is better than chemotherapy and both drugs are potentially being used as a first night scenario. So now with the uh, serotinib uh, being recognized by XN4 to be first line treatment, how would this impact on the clinic in a way of how doctors should select? Now let's remember, remind ourselves is that serotinib may have actually the benefit of the CNS penetration that is slightly less so with the chrysotinib. So maybe in a first line situation, if a patient have a brain metastasis, it is more tempting to consider the second generation drug rather than first generation drug as a frontline therapy. So, crizotinib has been a fantastic therapy for newly diagnosed patients with ALK rearrangements. And there's been the approval of next generation drugs, seritinib and electinib, for patients who progress on crizotinib. The next logical question in development of, of therapies in this space is, can you move these potentially more active and better therapies into earlier treatment settings? Seritinib uh, has, has tried to get into this area by comparing itself versus chemotherapy. And those data were presented recently in a trial called the ASCEND-4 study. All of the, the uh, seritinib studies are named ASCEND. The FOUR study was a simple study. Patients with newly diagnosed ALK rearrangements were randomized to chemotherapy or to seritinib. Now this was done at a time before crizotinib was widely available. Uh, obviously in places where crizotinib was available, that was the standard of care. But there was a time when still in regions of the world, you, you only had chemotherapy as an option. And what we found out is what was expected was that seritinib clearly beat chemotherapy in all outcomes. That, that really is a monumental study because what it proves is that seritinib belongs in the first line setting. Now the, the next logical question is, well how do you know it's better than crizotinib? And I think to be fair, we don't know that answer. All we know is that we have a second drug, a next generation drug, which appears to be more active in clinical models and preclinical models uh, than crizotinib appears to be better at getting into the brain, and now we know it deserves to be in the first-line space. Not yet approved to be in that, but with ASCEND-4, we think that would be good enough to, um, uh, for, for that to, to register as a first-line therapy. But the next big question, of course, is should it be used instead of crizotinib? And that's, that's something we'll have to wait on for, the, for those trials to get done. Seritinib has been studied in both the um, crizotinib resistant setting and now actually in the crizotinib naive setting. Um, actually, the phase one trial of seritinib originally looked at uh, patients who were crizotinib naive, um, ALK positive patients, and in the phase one setting, we even observed very prolonged responses when seritinib was used as the first. Um, ALK TKI. And now we actually have randomized data from ASCEND4 demonstrating that seritinib as first treatment, first ALK inhibitor, first treatment is very, very active. Um, and ASCEND4 now compared with chemotherapy, not with crizotinib. Nevertheless, we know that ASCEND4 was associated with a median progression-free survival of 16.6 .6 months in ASCEND4. 
Again, this is a cross-trial comparison, but generally speaking with crizotinib, all of the studies have shown that first-line crizotinib is associated with a median progression-free survival of you know, 10 to 11 months. And so in this kind of cross-trial comparison, it suggests that we are likely getting much longer um, benefits with a uh, second-generation inhibitor used first-line. I think the SN4 is a very positive study Certainib is clearly superior to chemotherapy, platinum pemetrexid chemotherapy. However, from Ascend4, we don't know how much more superior certainib is than crizotinib, at least in a head-to-head -head comparison. We are extrapolating from cross-trial comparisons. But I think the more important thing about Ascend4 really is that while we see this enormous benefit from first-line serotinib, it does have to be weighed against the side effect profile of serotinib, which is significant. Um, in the ASCEND-4 trial, we saw similar side effects of serotinib that we have reported previously in the phase one and two trials, but this included GI side effects, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, weight loss, fatigue, abdominal pain. And when you compare the AE listings for serotinib versus platinum pemetrexid chemotherapy, it's quite notable that serotinib seems to be associated with even more toxicity than cytotoxic chemotherapy, at least the way it was dosed in that study, which is the current FDA-approved dosing of 750 milligrams a day. So while I find Ascend4 very exciting because we saw such a prolonged frontline PFS with using a second-generation inhibitor, my main concern is the side effects um, that patients will experience during that time they're on first-line serotinib.